literally, not pictorially. So um, a number of us see pictures when we read, when we, um, when we hear things, when we envision how to get somewhere. Uh, there's almost, you know, you almost see visual, uh, visual pictures in your head. This, this individual will, is deficient in that, not especially to do that. Therefore, they need, uh, they need to have, instead of like having the Google map printed out, they need to have the directions, one, two, three, four, very sequential, um, written out. And it's easier for them to uh, follow that. Um, there are also uh, problems with executive function, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But basically, ability to stay organized, to plan, to prioritize, um, and to uh, focus and uh, impact some on memory as well. Uh, again, their processing will focus on details rather than kind of seeing the big picture and filtering down to the details. It kind of goes the other way. And, uh, and probably as a result of all these things, new situations can be really challenging for people who have a, a, a nonverbal learning disability, partly because they can't visualize, it's hard to generalize, um, and it's almost like they have to discover it anew. So this is kind of a general description of the, uh, of, of the <clears throat> syndrome. Now, again, I promise this is the only picture of a brain I will show you tonight. I can't seem to give any kind of presentation anymore without showing brains, but um, this is Basically, you know, the human brain is divided into hemispheres. There's a right hemisphere and a left hemisphere. Now, the left hemisphere is the area of the brain where the neural networks tend to process uh, logic, language, reason, um, where analytical thinking comes from, precision, um, planning, routine, sequencing, these things, you know, uh, these networks are generally located on the left side of the brain. And so if there's someone who has a cognitive profile um, that's, that we think of as associated with dyslexia, for example, that means there is disrupted the neural networks on the left side of the brain that, um, that process the varying aspects of language are disrupted, and so uh, the right side of the brain tries to take over some of that function. Well, the right side of the brain, on the other hand, is not good at real specific things. This is the right side of the brain is where emotion and humor, intu intuition, uh, emotion, uh, interpretation of communication, artistic, creative. And the right side of the brain is pretty bad at dealing with language. So what we do when we try to remediate something with <coughs> dyslexia is to essentially break the language down and really effectively rewire the left side of the neural network so that the left side of the brain functions more like it was supposed to in the first place. Now, with a nonverbal learning disability, the left side of the brain is likely to be pretty much intact, but the right side hemisphere, where this is where we have disrupted neural networks over here, um, and therefore, some of these things like emotion and humor, uh, visual spatial issues, um, holistic, being able to see a whole rather than part, uh, athletics, uh, interpreting, interpreting communication, and so on. These are some of the, of the functions that the right side of the brain does that don't work as well when you have somebody with nonverbal, a nonverbal learning disability. 
Uh, and so there, that's why we call it nonverbal, because it affects sort of nonverbal parts of functions. Yes? May I ask you what's meant by simultaneous on the right hemisphere? Uh, <coughs> let's see. Yeah. Si intuitive, simultaneous. Well, probably being able to be to 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 see uh, images uh, and uh, focus on more than one thing going on at the same time. So, you know, divided it, attention. Yeah, divided attention, or just in you know, on an inability to focus on multiple things happening at the same time, yes. which can be confusing. So. And again, um, the brain is an incredibly complicated organ and with uh, electrical connections and electrical networks that if, we're, if, if they were spread out would go from here to into Wisconsin probably, just one individual brain. So this is a little simplistic, but you know, generally, um, generally this is sort of where the two hemispheres of the brain actually, um, how they kind of divide up jobs and specialize. And that is really terrible. I'm going to just, uh, uh, I hate to do this, Jacob, but I'm just going to turn the lights off for just a minute so you can see my Venn diagram there. Um, because basically the, um, the core difficulty, the core challenge of nonverbal learning disability is that visual spatial piece, that visual spatial ability, and the executive function piece. In addition to that, uh, there will be some effect on social communication, <coughs> social relations, and academic. Now, the, um, <coughs> now, essentially, <coughs> we call this a four subtype model. Nonverbal learning disabilities are essentially kind of a spectrum. I'm not talking about the autism spectrum, just, you know, NLD has its own spectrum, basically, which, frankly, most brain based uh, syndromes do. I mean, you know, they're not like either or. Um, unlike pregnancy where, you know, you're either pregnant or you're not. There's no such thing as being a little bit pregnant. On the other hand, there is such a thing as being a mild dyslexic or having uh, sort of a mild effect from attention deficit disorder and so on, and depression and so on. These things kind of have a, a spectrum. Well, with nonverbal learning disabilities, the core issue is visual spatial impairment and executive function difficulty. Um, and so that will be present and maybe there will be a little bit of, social, of impact on social uh, function as well as academic function, uh, but it may be mild. Then you may have the core uh, deficit of visual, spatial, and executive, and then maybe one or the other, either social or academic, will be uh, will be more severely impacted. Um, and then eventually, um, so you might have in, you know uh, visual, spatial, executive function, and significant social impacts, or you might have the core deficit. Uh, with executive function and uh, visual spatial impairment with pretty significant academic impact, or you might have all of them. So um, depending on the severity of the NLD impacts on your <coughs> function. So we'll talk about executive functions just a little bit. Um, Executive functions are, is that part, it's kind of a, that center of your brain which is generally located in the prefrontal cortex of your brain, it's from the front of your head, um, and somewhat on the parietal lobes along the side. 
and they function as the brain's kind of conductor. So if you think about an orchestra, um, which we're sadly lacking right now um, because of labor problems, um, however, if you think of an orchestra that has expert musicians, wonderful sections of strings and wind, woodwinds and brass and percussion and so on, but they don't have a